Good morning. Like the backdrop this morning, is that Monsters Incorporated? That maybe? is Monsters Incorporated. It's it's. I've been in a Disney kind of mood. They're they're doing their Disney 100, and Colin and I went out, did some grocery shopping, and a few things, and we we're just looking around, and there's so many Disney things out right now, all celebrating the 100, and they also have that new collectible card game called Disney Lorcana, which is blowing the heck up it's impossible oh. to get the cards that... i've not heard anything about it no hype beforehand and so apparently it's one of those things where everybody discovers and it's like well now i must have them all well and there was some back, hype or... there was okay. some hype but it wasn't oh. out general it was really kept to the the gaming stores i think because like the and i channels. yeah this is so I was interested. I like CCGs and I like Disney. I'm like, okay, I'm interested, but eh, who am I going to get to play? You know, well, okay. the local game store had a league that you could get into and only people that joined the league could get the cards and uh, stuff like that. But okay. this was because all, they did it really well. I was very, very impressed because Disney released it to the game stores first if you wanted cards you had to go to your game store to get it you couldn't okay. get it online you couldn't get it at walmart target or anything like that so i was like well to award loyalty to you know like build it with the people that are the the tastemakers if you will you exactly. know the influencers okay yeah which okay. is great because that's not what happens most of the time you know it just uh, splashes game, out there that's right yeah, yeah game stores kind of get left in the lurch and it, you everybody goes and buys it online well and and from their corporate viewpoint, this was extremely smart because now people went, oh, well, I'm going to my game store and it's limited. So I have to get there and order it. And yeah. they did. And for like a month or something, that was that was it. No more cards. Sorry, you can't get any more. It, it, what they sold at the game store is it. And people were just dying. So then they released it to Walmart, Target and online. And people scooped it up and they said, well, we like Disney does, we have this much, you know, and, right. and artificial kind of, scarcity, which is, you know, learned from the diamond industry and various other places where it isn't really scarce. They can print out as many of them they want, but right. they do that stage release to build like desire to, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Okay. Which interesting. interestingly, the book I read before I'm reading again, actually audio book console wars. It's about, sega's rise and battle against nintendo and that's okay. what nintendo did after the 1983 crash with atari they said we are going to keep the quality up so everybody that signed up you're only allowed to make and release five games a year no more and you stores yes you want a hundred thousand here's 20 that's all you get and so yeah. you know it's a big corporate thing that's been forever but then everybody bought it up like you know just Boom, gone. So now if you want a, a booster box with all the packs, you can get it on Amazon for $650. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm not playing that game. <laughs> right. You know, it uh, kind of a segue. You know, Christmas season is kicking off already. Yes. You know, we already, Costco already had Christmas stuff out in the aisles and yeah. stuff. But there, especially the, what seems to be happening nowadays is, there's like special commemorative things that come around Christmas because they know that people are are willing to overspend to make sure that their children, their spouse, whoever gets exactly what they want. And so, of course, was it what is it in my case? Both Keith Emerson and Rick Wakeman, best keyboardists ever, you know, maybe in the, in the top half dozen, have big box sets coming out, like twenty discs and thirty discs. So they're going to cost three hundred and fifty bucks. And I'm like, I, I just, I mean, even for like. That breaks your $7 rule. It's my $7 rule. It's kind of funny. I, I, I do the quick calculation. It's like, so are these things so scarce that, but, but how will I ever get it? They're not going to get put into a used store. Anybody who buys this is not going to le re release it until they're dead. I'll get it at right. an estate sale maybe. So it really might be one of those things, you know, go to, go to golly and go pookie. I. I don't want anything else this year except this ri one ridiculous purchase. And so we'll see what happens. I, I, the, the, the wake, they both, you know, they're getting really smart about it isn't of course, Hey, here's the same things we have before, but it re-released with a nicer cover. That's, that's crap. 
they have live performances they have outtakes from you know working on the album and these are alternate versions of these various yeah. different things. and and just enough that's how i've always been suckered into the box sets you know i think we might have talked just last time about like the jethro tell so i had a whole bunch of vinyl and I was really resisting going to CD because I had my perfect turntable and my perfect vinyl. And then Jethro Tull came out with a 20 year <laughs> anniversary box set that had tons of stuff I didn't have. And so if I'm going to be anywhere near a big fan, a completist, I have to get the live performances. I have to get the, the Chateau disaster tapes and stuff right. like that. And so I did. And then that broke the dam. And this is kind of like, oh, no, I'm, this is the reservoir. The dam is long broken. And now I'm willing to pay something for. And it's not only CDs, it's DVDs, because it's got the live performance oh. of Rick Wakeman at Westminster Abbey or something. You know what I mean? Like on the, on the, on the amazing biggest pipe organ in the world type stuff. And so, of course, I don't need it, but what, what, what? And it really is, you know, I don't know, we're doing okay for money. We're at that, you know, there's different levels of rich. You know, everybody's candy bar rich. You can always get yourself a candy bar. Not doesn't affect you at all. Well, then you become like, I don't know, what's the magic price point for people thinking of buying a, a new electronic rig, if you will, some a new device, right. $300. I think I've seen that documented many, right, many right. places. Most people will be like, boy, that new Blu-ray DVD has much better than my previous DVD player. And all these other features, and now I can do it by Wi-Fi. Three hundred bucks, pff, I I can afford that. And then you, you keep working your up. Are you are you car rich? Are you house right. rich? Are you island rich? You know what I mean? Right, right. I mean, like, and and we're kind of getting to like I I can spend three hundred and fifty bucks. Please don't listen, IRS. Without like damaging my lifestyle, it's not going to be I'm going to do that and then not eat for a week. Right. It's kind of like the ridiculousness of wow, that's, you know, using my $7 rules, let's do the math real quick, 50 CDs instead of a 350, but but it's kind of funny. I've also become saturated. Maybe you have. I have so much of what I already want. Yeah. I have all the CDs and all the games and all the books and that kind of stuff. And when it's something extraordinary like this comes out, so, you know, to go back to your thing, wow, it's, it's an incredible amount of money. But if you're going to have something that's just in your wheelhouse, you love star wars disney uh, you know i love rick wakeman <laughs> Epperson. it it really could be that just uh, and, and maybe we've had this there's been some things that have come out that i really did say ah that's out of my so there's a gentle giant box set that i lust for and not only did i not get it when it came out but now because it was a limited edition what i just said no one's putting it up for sale it's not available it's out of uh, availability on amazon or anybody else someone's gonna have to die for me to get it there was a Weird Al Yankovic thing that came out. The accordion. The, the accordion case. Yeah. And I have his other box sets and lots of other stuff from him. But, you know, I just, you wish. You wish that yeah. you would have said, you know, damn and, and, it, I need to have this. And I want to, I want to, oh, well. Oh and well. part of that, so the lessons, you know, this is what the top millionaires do and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and right. It's funny you say that because they don't, Obviously, no, I'm not going to worry about running down to Dairy Queen or grabbing a candy bar. But the thing is, they don't do that. They they don't want the candy bar. They don't want the Dairy Queen. It's like not even appealing to them to do that. And mm -hmm. and you reach that point, too, where, OK, maybe you're not. I could just go drop 30,000 on a car and not even have a loan. You know, maybe you haven't reached that point, but maybe yeah. you're making enough money that you're paying all your bills and putting money away. And, and then you do reach a time, you know, where you're like, eh, I, I, last night we were at the exchange. Now, the exchange is a very dangerous place to go to and look around. <laughs> because there is lots of good stuff at reasonable prices. And yes. some, like I, I've mentioned about Record Den, someone just died that has my taste in music and they're all here. Right. And I really <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I'm at, you know, I'm at the exchange last night and I'm looking at the horror movies and I'm like, I have so many backlog of horror movies that me and Reese are watching and ones I've got. Do I really need to see if this $3 horror movie is any good? I'm not going to watch it for five years. And then I'm right. like looking at the CDs and stuff and I'm like, I've got all the music I want to listen to. Not, there's nothing new. There is a new Guns N' Roses. There's a new Def Leppard, which they didn't have. Oh. And, and, you know, so I'm like, okay, man, I didn't see those. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then Atari just came out with another new console that's actually their old console again interesting and they do that they'll all of a sudden have like 
this device can play 200 arcade games just as if you had in, in, in you know sitting there in the arcade when right. you were young. And like, well, who, it, who it, doesn't it, want that? <laughs> it's well, the thing is, this new this new console, it's actually the old Atari again. It looks like the old Atari has a cartridge slot. You can go to the exchange and buy any Atari cartridge, plug it in, and it works. It it's does not digital. It doesn't have digital anything, uh, mm. and it comes with the old style joystick. Comes with the old style paddles, and all it is is basically to play the old cartridges. You plug it in, and it works. Yeah. It's just, and I'm like, and they it's only 130 bucks, and, and I'm just like, but I got rid of my Ataris, you know. Right. But, so we're at the exchange and there's like this huge crate and it's just uh, countless uh, cartridges of Atari. And I'm looking through it going, man, I remember plugging the, and I'm like, but I have, I have an emulator on my Pi. How often do I hook it up and play it? Would I really use it? So I went right. through the whole exchange and I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting anything. So you, you reach that point where I have the money, I could buy it, but right. I, why? I, you know, I'm not going to play with it. You know, there really are, there are some things like that, that you move on. You know, I, I have very similar, whatever games I have that I just don't play anymore. Once in a while, I've returned to them. I mentioned when I discovered the Play-Doh simulation site and I went in and I went yeah. into the bank and conquered the dungeon. And it was like, the nostalgia was there, the delight of falling into that flow activity and so forth. But then I got to, okay, I'm kind of done. I really, it was nice to return to that, but I have all these new things to try. I have better quality games. It, it really is okay once in a while to acknowledge, you know, I, I kind of like having the good memory of that. And I don't want to, boy, so many things have come out in emulation now. And at, for a while, I was like, okay, I really can continue to play Asteroids on my Mac. And after a while, it was like, you know, all the troubleshooting I'm having to do to find specific executables and tune my machine so that it's exactly at the right 640 by 480 instead of the 20, 2920 that I have nowadays. It was, I I feel a little foolish, like putting all the work into this to, to take all those steps back. I have my fond memories of, back in my day, kids, you'd step up and put a quarter in for a right. machine. You know, I, I guess it's okay to move on. And especially even when it is like every one of those cartridges, it's just waiting for you to blow into it to make it work. <laughs> it's just waiting. You know what I mean? Right. It, 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 there's still, I love that, that largesse, that, that crazy, like, man, there's a hundred cartridges here and they're like a quarter each, you know, for, for, I could have all the things I always wanted ever. And maybe just in a long weekend, I would still only spend you know, 120 bucks or something like that, right. but wallow in it. I, well, it's, it's the, and in fact, here, that, since it's Segway Day, so there's always the next big thing. And I've always been, maybe you have been this too. I don't just abandon what I currently like in order right. to go the next big thing. I continue to like music. I play, I listen to music. Maybe that's the most thing. Certain books I read long ago, and I don't go back and reread hardly anything, but music, I'm still listening to. Emerson, Lake and Palmer from 1972. You know what I mean? It really is 50 plus years. They just had a, 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 so, so as I look at the kinds of things that are becoming available, I almost disregard the new stuff because I try new stuff all the time and it doesn't capture me in the way that those old things done. I know I've read studies that say, you know what movie, what music you love? The music you listen to when you're like 14 to 18. That's right. just brand in your brain. You're wired to love that forever. And even though I tried new radio stations and, and all kinds of new stuff, one out of 20 maybe captures me where it's like, hey, I'm putting that new Spock's beard on. And of course, I always had the prog rock weird thing, never the pop thing, never the popular thing. So that's all kind of intro to Time magazine does a, a series of interesting articles each year where it's like the Time 100. Here's the most important, influential, et cetera, et cetera, people. And they started a thing about three years ago called the Time 100 Next, where they look for the next, the breakthrough ones, the ones that are not well known for now, but but are up and coming. And if you want to see the best of what really new stuff is coming out, it's not Springsteen's latest album, which is still good, but it's the next. It's Greta Van Fleet or something yes, like that. Right. And so humblingly, I read the latest hundred in the in, in the uh, Time issue. I knew one. Wow. And how weird is that? I really am online all the time. I'm always trying new things. 
I, and I have a little bit of 90% of everything is crap. So I look for the really good stuff, not just the popular stuff. In fact, I kind of think popular is the kiss of death. My taste does not often coincide with the general public. The general public is so easily satisfied with repetition and low quality bullshit, but you can hum along for three and a half minutes or, you know, whatever it is. I have all these kind of weird dismissive things ready to say because I've seen how many flashes in the pan have flashed right by and right. they didn't get. And I care about this brand's got five albums out and they've stood the test of time and they keep making good music. So I just kind of care about that more. But still, only one, only one. I, it was J.D. Vance was the guy that I knew, the one person oh. that I knew because he happens to be in Ohio and happens to be kind of like the shitty candidate that beat a much better candidate. But he's learned how to worship Trump, how to do social media, how to, how to like whatever that demographic that he was catering to. And, and I'll stop with my dismissal of him because, hey, he won. But then to go through all the other phenomenons, leaders, advocates, all these other things like I really do pay attention to the movements that are happening and the and the musical trends that are happening and the new filmmakers and so forth, or at least I try to. But, you know, reality would say, oh, you don't know what's going on. Have you really reached that point of the old right. guy in the rocking chair that's like, just, just give me my Stevie Ray Vaughan. I know he's dead and not making any new music. It, it, it's really humbling. And and when I started that discussion online, people said, well, you, you know, a couple of those, but they're just, they're not known, if you will. Like there's a, um, Adam Conover, I believe is his name. Adam ruins everything. It's like, yeah, okay. I had heard of that, but like just from the name, maybe there's not enough name recognition. Right. And I'll, I'll say this, a lot of things are like, well, he's got this many Instagram followers. She's TikTok famous. She's, you know, got uh, all that stuff I'm not heavily tied into. I really don't spend a lot of time on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok because I think it's short attention span theater. You know what I mean? <laughs> like uh, things that are in a five second loop, hardly ever. Uh, my God, that's so disposable. There's so much nothing to it. And how much can you really be talented to craft a perfect five second loop? It just seems like... It's, it's like listening to a single instead of an album. Right. There's just not enough there for me. And yet, boy, you sure can become 10 million follower famous. Oh, yeah. and, and you know what I mean? 10 million download famous. And yet I'm just not of that, not only of that generation, but not of that mindset. I, I just, you know, I don't. For, and another thing is there's all kinds of people that are advocates, leaders, whatever term you might want to use that are like fashion people. And good Lord, I think that's also just so disposable and so dismissible. <laughs> it's kind of like by definition disposable. You have to have new stuff every season. And so who can I name that really has created a line of clothing for 20 years, multiple different kinds of things, that's like, I'm an Armani guy. I wear all his stuff and I can trust him because I look, you know, there's hardly anybody that I care about in the entire world. I, of I can name I can name <laughs> the one that I like that I get all the time, Goodwill. Yeah. There you go. Or, or Levi's, you know, Levi's Strauss was one of fashion. But, and, and I don't think that it's because I'm set in my ways. I'm all, everybody buys new clothes. Everybody, you know, but it just the, the reason that I buy clothes is not so I can wear a certain fashion and therefore get some of the patina of them on me. Right. I so much don't care about the name, the trends you've seen people for a while, they were wearing bum, right. You know, where, and, or for us, by us, or all kinds of, other things that just seem to be, I, I feel exploited if I buy a polo shirt. Any any of the little things that started to have the little insignia that was like, well, now you've made it. So now you have Dockers and now you have a polo shirt. And I just, I really reject well, that kind of, of brand <laughs> building. I, uh, I, I, I was just talking about this. I think at the RG at the beginning of September, I was wearing... I was wearing a Relentless Geekery t-shirt one day and then a horror lasagna the next. And right. people were asking me a, a, about it. And I'm like, well, you know, the most genius marketing in the world is when that one marketing guy said, you know what? People love our brand. Why don't we put our logo on a t-shirt? We'll make them pay for it to do our advertising. And I'm like, how genius is that? Not only is marketing doing well, it's bringing in income directly. <laughs> I'm like, so I, I wear t-shirts that exactly. market me and, and brand me. <laughs> that, that thing, everything that borders on advertising being what's driving the thing, that automatically makes me like, God, that's such mind control stuff. That's yes. so much people understanding how other people are so easily swayed by 
do you want status does the guy want to get the girl you know what i mean like whatever it is that helps you increase your uh mating possibilities within the herd because you're wearing the right genes and i i'm so dismissive of that so i kind of don't want to buy into it but there are people that are really good at it that are genius at setting that up you know what i mean whatever that little logo and it, it what, what really amuses me that like whenever i see hey porsche built a brand about you know like high torque super fast cars you know what i mean you got to wear your little driving gloves and everything yes. like that and then the first time that i saw a porsche suv it was like well they just decided to say fuck brand maintenance people now that they're older and have 2.5 kids and want to drive them to the soccer game they really will still buy you're going to tear down the road in that suv that terrible non <laughs> wind you know it's like around here you, you can always tell the like real farmers from the the pretentious people because you see a pickup go by and it's stacked to the gills it's rusted it looks like it's been running for 50 years and it's just still going yep right. there's a real farm then you see the guy go by in the bright shiny flashy pickup where the bed has no scuff marks nothing has I'm ever been hauled in the damn anything. thing it's yeah. right. <laughs> you know it's kind of funny one thing i've always done is like i really don't go for the brand kind of like you know if a guy wears a tux he knows that he's okay every guy looks like a little penguin in a tux and they're all okay and and but what i used to get is like what's the the t-shirt that nobody else has when when my parents and i we've had a wonderful trip to germany and then if you get a t-shirt that has like the gross gluckner you know this huge glacier in austria you come back to the United States and there's nobody sporting the gross collector. My dad <laughs> used to go to trade shows and I would specifically request, please get whatever you think is like the silliest, the most ridiculous. So I wore a t-shirt with Captain Porta Potty <laughs> on it in high school because nobody, I mean, people might be having all, all the other brand names that we've talked about or i had a lot of rock and roll t-shirts and that kind of stuff so i wasn't totally uncool but it was just kind of funny to be like if we went to the corn palace in the badlands far enough away close to the badlands it was like you come back and and what's fun is not only do you wear that and it, it, it incites conversation it's not like the knowing nod of hey you and i are both izod people it's much more like oh well, where the hell's that and then you get to tell the story of the cool trip and stuff did i mention this so there i am at costco and I'm wearing a, a Paul Bialatovich t-shirt. One guy and came up to you. One guy, like, uh, who in the world would even know this guy? He's a fantastic guitarist, as I've talked about. But nobody knows he exists. He's still in that that kind of underground of progressive rock and stuff like that. And it was just, then it was really a nice conversation to say, you and I really know better than the entire world <laughs> what people should, what music people should be listening to. Because this guy's fantastic and he deserves a big break. So... Nice. Anyway, it, 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 by the way, did you see G3, you know, the, the thing where they do three great guitarists on one bill? The origination of that was like Steve Vai, Joe Satrionic, Eric Johnson, long time ago. Back in the day. And they, and they are regathering that original group that toured. Wow. And I am just, you know, they've had other great guitarists and I've seen a lot of these G3 shows, but I'd be really curious as to, you know, those guys have done great things since then. I'd love to hear them again. I'd love to just see people that can make too many notes so beautifully, so perfectly. As long as Eric Johnson doesn't continue to tune his guitar in between every single song. Because I remember that being an incredible distraction. It's like, you know, you just caught me. It cost me like 20 minutes of music because you you really do retune after every song. You <laughs> You could get one of those new guitars that stays in tune anyway. So. <laughs> Change your strings sometime, man. <laughs> Honestly. So, so let's see. So what, let's see. What's our next segue? What do we I have? don't know. We, we, <laughs> so what's been going? So, okay. So you were going to go to the balloon fair. So we had a whole big Saturday. We had a whole big day planned. We started off by going down to the um, McKinley Memorial because in their library, they had a Lego exhibit oh, and cool. uh, lame. I really was looking forward. We've been to Legoland and various other places, and I love seeing cool big Lego. Ma, they did the Statue of Liberty in Lego. They did Mount Rushmore. They did Empire State Building. This was the McKinley Memorial, and I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but it's beautiful, a big white building, yeah, big yeah. white dome, and so forth. But that was like, that was the only thing that this particular artist had done that was a physical sculpture. On the walls, there were tons of 
photos of various other things he had done. And in some cases, it wasn't even so much the Lego as it was the meeples that come with Lego. I'm not sure if there's a specific name, Leeples, but you know what I mean? That they were like, oh, here it is. Uh, the thing was called Bricks and Flicks, if I remember right, something like that. And so it was, they're made out to look like, here's Russell Crowe from Gladiator. Here's the, Ma the, the Matrix. Here's uh, Men in Black and the Neuralizer. And they had various different things. And so it was cool too how he evoked those various different movies in Lego, but it was only like a poster. It wasn't the real thing. There wasn't enough to it. So, yeah. and there were other contest entries from kids that had done various different things. So here's a cool Viking boat and here's a, 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 a Star Wars spaceship and stuff like that. But overall, it was so much less than I had anticipated. So much less. I really was thinking, I'll see, like not only see the poster for Gladiator, but Here's like the Parthenon that he fought right. in, or the Colosseum, Colosseum, sorry. You know what I mean? And so that was kind of a disappointment. But then the entire other rest of the facility was very cool. About McKinley, a great president, about Stark County and how it did, did specialized steel and was a big place for the war efforts multiple times. I love history, things like that, where there's really pride to be taken at what kind of cool things have happened. We then intended to go to Ravenna for the Balloon Festival. And got there, mile back up of cars. We're looking for anything that's in the skies, nothing up in the skies. So apparently they were going to do, and, like they sometimes do, one in the morning and one in the evening. Yeah, yeah. In there for the morning. And we had um, plans with friends at like 530. So we can't stick around to see the, and sometimes they won't even do a complete balloon flight. They'll do what they call a glow, where they leave them tethered to the ground, but they bring them up like 100 feet in the air. And then when they do their, the, you know, the, flames that heat yeah. the air so it'll rise higher then they all look like big beautiful christmas ornaments or whatever else it might be so we pulled a shrewdy does anybody else use that phrase i think that's a family phrase <laughs> and you know did the turn around that you turn where you shouldn't and we had noticed a mini golf course called the birdie shack. shack yes exactly thank you you're so smart they, they smart. used to have they used to have like a 10 <laughs> foot tall little chicken birdie but it got stolen and never got returned oh, and never got returned that's sad but it's a great course it's one of those like old-timey courses where it's not laid out on a computer and then just built it really does follow the lay of the land and the, some of the holes are so long there's no way to get a hole in one like it's a power four for a mini golf thing because it really yeah. has enough obstacles and so we we consoled ourselves with that really good mini golf course and then we went to see our friends but this the not getting a chance to see balloons this is like our sixth abortive attempt we've been to frankenmuth we've been to wadsworth we've been chagrin falls where just like the weather was bad or something happened that it was it, like even i think the closest we ever came was i think chagrin falls they were out in a parking lot and they were on the ground and inflated but the weather was such that they really couldn't even let them go up on a tether because they get kind of batter or bumping around so we're just going to have to go to Albuquerque. We're just going to have to do that early October, I think it is, right, where there's like 100 we, balloons, uh, yeah. 100 maybe, and we just haven't been able to put it together here in local reasonable driving and stuff like that. Yeah, the the balloon affair, it, I mean, it's it's changed over the years. Back when I was a kid, it all took place downtown. It was all free and, and stuff. They still have a downtown component which has vendors and bands oh, okay. and food yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. And then they have the thing at Sunbow Farms, which oh, exactly neither one of them is that big. They're both, it's almost like a small street festival, really. Because I went to the Balloon Affair last year and I was like, eh, there's a few vendors. They have a Jeep thing. They're running over trucks. They have some stuff for the kids. The okay. balloons went up and, you know, it was like, eh, it was, it was like a small street festival that you have to pay to get into. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I was looking forward to like, hey, I'm at this festival. What am I going to bring to tonight's dinner? How about kettle corn? You know, you get something that's very much summer festival stuff. Can I bring enough corn dogs for everyone? You know, that, right. that kind of thing. It We were really looking forward to doing that. And then the fact that it really was just that high overhead parking, et cetera, et cetera. We abandoned that and still had a very nice time with our friend, with, with Colleen's family. But it it just really was Sometimes when you try to pack multiple things into the day, just you have to say, well, we got to move on and make a choice. Don't don't keep hoping. Hope is not a plan. <laughs> so. I, I, they just I don't know what they they just don't handle the influx of cars. And it's always a line like 45 minutes, an hour and a half long waiting to get into it. 
And like, that's kind of ridiculous to go see the blue. We're in effect. line like 10 minutes. And then when we said, I've crept up like three or four car lengths, multiply that by how many cars I see ahead of me. Like you said, this is going to be an hour wait. I don't want to sit in the car for an hour. I want to go do something for an I, hour. I don't think they have <laughs> the people directing traffic in any way. I think it's it's yeah, everyone it. pushing, trying to get through the light. And then people are like, well, I've waited long enough. So they drive and they're sitting in the middle of the road. So then these people can't go. And they're like, well, screw you guys. And they move up and block it. So then everybody's blocked. And then right. there's nobody like directing which line to move in. And it's just people pushing their way in. So yeah Honestly, it seemed a lot like that and in fact a lot of what we saw were signs saying don't park here you know the, the approach road that you're going to go before you turn left it, it's there's all kinds of people that have properties there and they're like some people were selling parking spots on their thing and then you grow, walk across their property get to it and others were like no we're we're not a parking place don't pull in and give us 20 bucks we don't want any mile money for you right parking on our lawn if you will so right. it was it's interesting. <laughs> well, my I, my ex uh, martial arts instructor lives just a couple blocks from there. So you know, yeah. If I wanted to, I could just say, "Hey, can I park here? I'm going over to the balloon affair." But uh, I, then I got to talk to him too. So <laughs> I, I, it's kind of funny. I'm trying to you know segue time. So Colleen and I have the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival coming up in Toronto, Toronto yeah. Thursday for a week, and it's a huge thing. There really are. All, probably close to 100 various different performers, stand-up improv podcasters, that kind of stuff. And they're scattered all over the city. They have the Comedy Bar and the Rivoli and the Garrison and the Elgin Theater and the Royal Theater, all these places they're going to have it. And so I, you have to, they have a thing where you get like 12 credits. And then as you see a show, it releases that credit back to you. So you can keep on planning a little bit ahead. And I'm like, well, I'm going to maximize, you know, how many different people we see and the ease of doing that. So it's actually kind of other people, uh, when, they, when I'll try to explain what I do, and it, some people it's like, oh, God, that's overwhelming. And yet it's very cool to say, like usually shows are 7, 9, and 11, so you can see three shows a night. And where they are, some things are um, easily gotten to by public train or even walking. Others, you really got to hustle. If this show starts at all late, then you're looking at your watch saying, no, I'm not getting out here at you know 8.30. I'm getting out here at 8.45, and then it's almost impossible but I really managed to put together a pretty good schedule out many of the things we want to see. And of course, a lot of them, I really don't know how good they're going to be, but I just like seeing not repeats, but all these other things. One night I managed, there's a place we really love called the Rivoli. That is actually where kids in the hall got you know, a big start. Oh, cool. And, and I managed to do all of seven, nine and 11 are all in that place. People we want to see. And so then instead of, you know, running and having to, you know, one of the cool things about this modern world is, between a Presto card and your phone that has the bus pass and the mapping that you can do, you're not like, oh my God, I don't live in Toronto. How do I get around? Colleen, the very first year, she and I were both really good at, okay, we can make this. We're trying to get from the Royal Theater to this. And if we just catch, and that you can see the bus schedule or the trolley car or various other things, the trains, we got really good at all the different kinds of public train. And, and we were really good at continually getting to the place just when it was on time there was just enough time to catch it that you know we're walking along the bus is coming to a stop we hustle get on the thing it's it's very satisfying to be like well i got like 10 nights there i really we've seen like 30 or 28 or like almost the maximum number that you can see just by putting a little bit of time into nice. doing this, this analysis so it's very cool to look at the map of toronto and and like Okay, now we know that right here, there's always a Tim Hortons, like within a block of everywhere. You know, that's the there's McDonald's. Tim Hortons yeah. everywhere up in Canada. Exactly. <laughs> so if we really are trying to like run around and, and you know, some of these places, bars have food, others don't, you know, you can always get a quick bagel or muffin or whatever they do at Tim Hortons and, you know, kind of keep, keep your energy level up with a little bit of food. So I guess enough about that, except that thing of, I made a huge spreadsheet and I had all the different day and time slots and then here's the list of artists and then you know like when you choose this guy you say well i don't have to worry about this and this so you kind of like my greens are the ones we're going to for sure and then the reds are the ones we don't have to go to because i've already i'm going to go see ron funches earlier i don't have to worry about this others. and then yellow are the ones okay here's the things i'm going to do in order and each time that we release a thing it's like okay colleen and i synchronize we're going to get now it's going to be a lee man or whatever like that at this next thing and if we really work it out like we've done in the past, we're going to just see so much fun stuff. We found a really cool place to stay with Booking.com called Condo in the City. You know, it's Airbnb and Booking have a lot of places that are not your classic 
hotels or hostels or whatever else it might be. So this place is like kind of downtown Toronto. It's right on one of the cable car runs and like a block from the train run and that kind of stuff. And I'm just hoping that when we're done at, you know, the Rivoli, it's like a three block walk back to our place. If we're at the comedy bar, that's far Northwest, then it's going to be a certain amount of hassle to get home. And once in a while, like, oh, that bus now runs every hour and we missed one. Let's just walk. I don't want to wait right. an hour as the night deepens and stuff like that. Right. Toronto is a very cool city because it's all, I think, walkable and safe. We we only occasionally have been in a place where it's like, you know, there's nobody else around here. <laughs> Even if we cried for help, <laughs> we would we would not get a lot of response from right. rescuers and stuff like that. Anyway, besides the festival, Toronto is a very cool city with how wonderfully diverse it is, all different kinds of ethnic restaurants, different yeah cool things to see we discovered that again we always do this tie back they have a lego land well oh, the wow. abortive lego display that i just tried to see let's go see real cool lego. <laughs> right and, and we will see the cn tower built in lego or something nice, like that nice. toronto landmarky type stuff nice. so and, and you know you mentioned something like that kent does several of those types of things every year and within the they do a beatles fest where there's like seven eight different bars all playing beetle cover bands and you can just wander between them they do a blues fest each year and i know ravenna is starting to do some things like that and ravenna now has a dora and i think kent has a dora so you can as long as you don't go past the little line and get shot by the secret police, you can wander around with your cup, your red solo cup of alcohol. That's interesting. I so I didn't know that's like an electric fencing type thing where no, it's, no, it's, it's just it's signs okay. that say you okay. So so I first found this down in Worcester, first time I saw it, where they have an area marked off downtown and it encompasses pretty much all the bars and on the streets and on Friday, Saturday nights, it's effective between here and here. So if you can have open container is what it is. It That's gives an exemption for the open container. Uh, okay. So that allows you to wander between different venues with whatever you have to drink. Like drink. Drink in hand instead of having to guzzle it down and then go to the next place. Right. Okay. And right. I think, and this is my assertion, just kind of talking to people a little bit. I think they found that it's like, well, you know, we've been so strict, like, oh, you can't walk outside with that. You have to drink it here. That yeah. they actually found people were drinking less at places and then they were drink or they were drinking more and then totally drunk wandering around causing problems everywhere. And, right. and and they said, like we've said for so many things, you know, go with it instead of trying to fight against it. So it's like, look, you can stay within this area we have to worry about you less and you know you're good and i think it's been a great thing for the cities that do it obviously it is because more and more cities are implementing it and pushing for it so yeah, honestly that i have not heard of that being done like modernly currently i didn't know places were looking at that the last times that i was aware of that was u of i used to have certain like halloween was big with everybody in the streets in costume this is champaign urbana illinois and and pork day or whatever else it might be pork day <laughs> tell me yeah Weasel gosh, stomping it's, day it's that, it's so <laughs> but just that they would kind of like the, all the policemen would not give everybody hassle for that big area of campus town. And there was a little bit of cleanup extra, but it seemed like the kids, when they were given more freedom, they didn't abuse it. They were actually, it was like, well, what a nice holiday that we don't have to worry about. Everywhere I go, I'm going to get rousted and stuff like that. I'm really glad that some communities are saying, we really do have that kind of agora, that open area between you know these four square blocks because that's where all the bars are and stuff like that let's make this pleasant instead of making it that people are sitting there tapping their batons on their hands waiting yeah. for you to slip up you know what i mean so yeah. very cool so okay. I, I i haven't been to the beetle fest in multiple years and i know they do a blues fest and so i'm i've been remiss in making it to things i've just had so much going on with work and side projects and stuff that's like my time is just like well I, I need to do this i need to do this and and i think i'm like okay i'm, I'm gonna get burnt out here soon i feel it coming and then i won't do anything so you know find right. some things like that to go to and it's a great evening because you know you go into a bar and, and you hear a band that sounds like the beatles and they look like the beatles in your I, you know this is the fab four this is exactly you know, they, yeah. <laughs> honestly that i 
I know I've heard about Beetlefest. I didn't realize that that's what it was, that it wasn't a particular venue and a band, that it was all over the place. Yes. And that's a cool idea to just be able to wander in and out and like, this is kind of like being at, what was the name of the club in Germany? The something you know, where it's like seeing the Beatles in a bar. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Everybody's right. dream is, you know, it's so that's, I'll have to look into that. I didn't, I, those, that and the Blues Fest have not been on my radar what we've discovered is we really like those small town festivals. We will go to Potato Fest and Sauerkraut Fest, Fest, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. But it's not so cool that it's every year. Like for when I first discovered that just like the Swallows return to Capistrano, there's even like songs about it. The Buzzards return to Hinkley, really? Ridge, return to Hinkley Ohio. And we went and it was really cool. And, and they actually have, you know, like there's, they have, park rangers explaining about buzzards they have a buzzard that's like had you know, got hurt but they have it on and like the person's really having to muscle this thing because buzzards even though all birds are light with the hollow bones and stuff they're it's heavy, still not a, big. a four ounce bird it's a 40 pound yeah, bird or whatever they're pretty big yeah and they're big and so we really liked it but then we kind of went back too soon maybe even just the next year and it was like this is exactly the same it's it's like we we like this and the pancake breakfast was fun but it was just it now we do those kinds of things like every five, six, seven, eight right. years and, and recapture the novelty of it. And, and we haven't found one yet that we have to go to every year. We just talked about going to Sauerkraut Fest down in Waynesville. It's between uh, uh, Columbus and Cincinnati. And we really had a nice time. It's one of those where it's huge in terms of how many craft vendors, like streets and streets and blocks and blocks of all these people lined up so if you're looking for a candle or a birdhouse or whatever else it might be you'll find it there but it's also like three and a half hours away and we're really going to drive seven hours to have two hours of wandering around and eating sauerkraut ice cream and sauerkraut right. stick and stuff like that so we're thinking about that but then what we start to think of as well as long as we're down there how do we make like a night out of it let's stay in Cincinnati or Columbus or Yellow Springs or Xenia or whatever's around there. And then Waynesville is just 20 minutes down the road and we'll do all the other cool historic or Yellow Springs has some cool stuff. It really yeah. does. It's such a great little hippie town right in, you know, in the middle of Ohio that like, isn't that, I think Dave Chappelle lives there, or at least he was. You, living you, there. Yeah, he, he has, I think a house, but I think he might live somewhere else. I don't know. Okay. But just that, the fact that other people have found it cool enough then it's like, yeah. I, I love wandering places where it's not just standard, but it really has, wow, let's see, what is it in North Carolina, Asheville? Like it's where Biltmore House is. And so you think, well, it's kind of an historic site place that apparently a lot of artists decided, well, let's make this an artist colony. The, the same thing in Spring Green, Wisconsin, which is right near Frank Lloyd Wright sign, like Taliesin is up there. And I love that kind of thing, even though we're not looking to necessarily fill our house with paintings and sculptures and things like that. It's very cool to go into the place where it's a working studio. The guy's got things up in their gallery. The, the, the lady's got all of her stuff out and you can actually talk to her about, you know, how did you make this? What, how, what are the materials? What, how long did it take? That kind of stuff that sometimes they're very, very happy to talk to you about something that otherwise they do a lot of solo time in order to create these things. Right. So we're, it's coming to the end of fall you know, summer festival season but there's all kinds of cool fall festivals and we're also thinking you know even if it's just like a three-hour drive if, if it's a three-hour drive through beautiful leaves changing i, I want to do that anyway so let's right. when is hocking hills at peak leaf let's plan a trip to go down there do old man's cave and various other waterfalls and stuff like that surrounded by bursts of orange and red and yellow and then you know what i mean if we get back at midnight at night we didn't even stay overnight like like my backdrop here, that I don't think I'm happier than when I'm in a place that's like overwhelmingly colored, leaves crunching underfoot as you go along, wind rustling through the trees. I I just think this is like such a beautiful thing. I like these colors. You know what I mean? Whatever these colors are, am I a fall? I guess I am. You know what I mean? For I've right. always loved orange and things like that. It it it's got a limited time. You know, you can kind of follow peak leaf as it descends through Canada into the United States and stuff like that. And I, I like just by learning a little bit about it, again, the wonders of the internet, you can actually like do that time-lapse thing of give me peak leaf and then week by week show me, oh, this would be the week to go up into upstate New York. This would be Pennsylvania. Here's Ohio. Here's going down to Great Smoky Mountain National Park. And I just, what a cool thing that it's not, well, here's hoping. Maybe some part of how this started was 
Colleen and I are having our anniversary this Thursday. You know, that's the, our, the first day of yes. festival perfectly. Yeah. Well, we went to Bar Harbor for our honeymoon and uh -huh. stopped in Niagara Falls. And like, really, we're just like wonderfully touristy and stuff. And I thought, well, we're going to have a beautiful drive through all these beautiful leaves. It wasn't late enough. It was like uh, September 21st is our anniversary. And things were still very green that they weren't changing yet. And so then I became aware of, well, you know, you got to go northern or uh, more northerly early or kind of like track it. And elevation matters. You know, you go up into the Adirondacks or the Appalachians and you get a different set of things than down in the southern tier of New York and stuff like that. I guess it's kind of, I've become kind of an aficionado of where we can find good leaves in Michigan and Minnesota and how far are we willing to drive. And right. maybe even like weekend by weekend, you can pick a different place. And, and which are the ones that have a lot of oaks and maples and really pretty ones, or is it going to be all aspen, which are really beautiful, but oftentimes aspen is like everything is yellow and that's pretty, but it isn't the bowl of tricks of variety yes. <laughs> that I'm looking for. Right. So have we talked about this before? There's a place called Kinsua Bridge. I think in Pennsylvania, maybe it's New York. I'm sorry, I'm not certain, but it's like a big railroad trestle, big storm, took it down, but it still right. extends halfway out into the valley. They made it a walking path so you can walk out to the end of it. And then you look around in this valley and you go there when peak leaf is and you're surrounded. surrounded yeah. Oh my God, it's it, beautiful. The Kinzu area is really beautiful, beautiful for camping yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, they have a glass floor at the very end yeah which, I, I see I, i'm kind of okay with that I, no, i'm not really doesn't like it and yet we held hands and she trusted me and we went out there and you know what i mean like she i i love and admire my wife for how sometimes even when she's not sure that she wants to do it it's like it's one more step Pook. we can do this and then she looks around and goes look where i am look you know not only can yeah. you see around but you can look down <laughs> and yes. see the like, floor below you right <laughs> right and you, you were talking about you know the upcoming events etc cetera, etc cetera. You know, colin and i were already looking ahead like at christmas same type of thing there's so many cool things to go and do last year we went to stan hewitt and walked through there at christmas which and i do it a big they oh, have yeah all it's, ornaments it's everywhere beautiful <laughs> in each room exactly and and, cool. and we were like yeah we did it last year you know it's gonna be the same i don't want to go again so we're this year is gonna be like zoo at the lights we're gonna or lights at the what do what they call it and we're gonna go do that and you know i like going those things cambridge does something i haven't been to in like a decade where it's a dickens holiday and people are dressed up like dickens characters and walking around and stuff exactly we we have uh we've made a point have made a point a couple of years now of Marietta has a really cool place called the People's Bank Theater that is that old, uh, uh, and they seem to get enough bands coming through that almost always we can find something we want to see. So this year it's going to be Grand Funk Railroad. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. I've never seen live and that they're they kind of faded away, but they're going to, they're back to do a tour. And by being down in Marietta around like December 16th, exactly what you're talking about. There's Christmas things all around Marietta. There's, uh, I think it is Cambridge. We're, we'll stop by there, Dickens wise. Is, is that the place where they, they do City Hall up really big? Yes. All yeah. Kinds of, so that for sure we're doing that. There's a place called Tamarack down in West Virginia. That's also like an artist's colony type stuff. And so every time we've gone down there, we found fun Christmas stuff for ourselves or for family members and stuff like that. And it's, I don't know, an hour and a half into West Virginia. It's not nothing, but the beautiful, like snow covered mountains going through as long as the weather is not terrible. We've did, but there's also West Virginia. We were really crazy and went to a place that has the most Christmas lights, like in that part of the United States, they're on everything, all this. And we liked it enough, but we do the same kind of fun calculus of, okay, to start from Cleveland, it's like a four hour drive. Right. And then you do maybe an hour and a half in this park. So really I'm going to drive like eight hours to do an hour and a half of amazing lights. Is there a way I can get like most of those lights, but only drive an hour? You start looking around for where there are other big lighting displays and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's that time of year, you know, like you said, the, the leaves, <clears throat> Halloween's coming up and Christmas and there's right. so much to do, you know, so uh, you can't fit it all in. That's the problem. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, we we have gotten, we really go for usually variety instead of repetition. You know what I mean? Like we're looking for what are the other cool things that we, I don't know, there's got to be multiple pumpkin festivals. Let's go to a different one than the ones we've been to before. And same with apple cider festivals or corn mazes. I love me a good corn. Ra maze. Ramsayer Farms is a good one. Like Ram Sayer? Yeah, 
if you haven't okay. been down to that one, they, they do a different corn maze every year. They have two of them usually, uh, but it's a working farm. They do like a sunflower festival, which I think just happened and uh, yeah. they do things, but it's, it's got animals so you can feed the goats and they have a corn bin. That's like jumping into a sand pile and playing with corn. Um, <laughs> They, so you, you can, can slide down a slide oh. into the corn, right. which unfortunately, I don't know if you'll fit in the barrels because you slide through barrels. <laughs> Your exactly. shoulders are probably good. But then they have things like they have big tires from the tractors that kids can climb around on. It's like a playground. They oh, have okay. pumpkin chunking. So they actually have big, they have gourds and pumpkins and, you know, you 50 cents for two or whatever. And you get the big, long rubber bands and, and, yeah. and shoot it. Exactly. Yeah. And watch it explode when it hits the ground. Yes. They, they have a little, it's not go-karts, they're pedal like bikes, but it's one of those that's set up that you have to like pedal five times around to move one inch. And then okay. they have like races and you race people. And I, I did it with Jason <laughs> a couple of times and, you know, we're just pedaling like, like furious. We're going, Err. but the, the fun <laughs> thing was Gina and her kids, we like, we're all doing it. So it's all of us in there and we're all singing the Mario Kart theme. Dun, 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 you know? <laughs> that must be hilarious to put all that effort in to see yourself sailing forward. That's the yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. What's the place called? Rum? Ram Sayer Farms. Ram Sayer Farms. Thank yeah, you. It, it's a fun one. I mean, it, again, like you said, it's nice to go, nice to see it, nice to do it, but you don't have to go every single year, you know? Okay. It, we're, th like, I, we love doing these kinds of things. We've been to Kirtland. We've been to all kinds, you know, just that. I'm always looking for corn mazes. Did I ever tell you this story? We were at a place near like, it's called something like Wooden Nickel or Buffalo Head. They had a big corn maze and we, it, it's middle of the week. So Colleen, they're out in this corn maze. We're like the only people in it. And a storm moves in that was not a cloud in the sky 20 minutes ago. And suddenly it's serious storm, wind, hail, that kind of stuff. You know, if you're in a corn maze, you can't just run to shelter. You have to like find your way back out of the maze. And we were going to be the people that were going to like, oh, no, I don't want to get wet. I think I'll wreck the maze. I'll break through the wall. Oh. So we got out, but we were drowned rat bedraggled with how much rain we had gotten hit we both ended up going into the bathrooms and like wringing our clothes out wow. into the, into the, in the sink because we really you walk in and you're like you know what i mean you're like sloshing noises out of your shoes and stuff <laughs> oh man it was it was hilarious. and and you know when you walk in and the, the lady just laughs and says bathrooms are over there <laughs> you knew our plight it was hilarious but that that you know once in a while colleen uh loves reading laura ingles wilder stories and pioneer stories if you will and they have w uh, one that was like the children's blizzard where a whole bunch of people in the dakotas if i remember right were like walking home from school and a storm hit so quickly that they lost dozens if not hundreds of kids because they couldn't get to shelter whiteout conditions if they knew where they were going suddenly they didn't some were smart and like held on to each other you know but but it was just that's how quickly a storm can sometimes hit you know we've been to mount washington where they, they will say you know you can't count on doing a hike here if if you hear we will not even let you go up the mountain if there's any possibilities of really bad weather because the weather can be so changeable. They get the fastest winds, like 200 miles an hour at the top of Mount Washington. It's whatever that perfect geologic convolution of things that really bad weather and really high winds and stuff like that can happen in a, in a heartbeat, if you will. Right. So we, we, we've been careful a couple of times when we we're, were hiking around. I know the Narrows is one of those places in Utah where it can be a beautiful day, but if the if a storm hits and the rain starts hitting, all those tributaries that pour into the Virgin River, they fill up quickly and you could be walking and then carried along and dashed against the rocks yeah. by this incredible force of water. So we've never been the the amusing story about being caught in the corn maze, but luckily we've never we one time right over here in the Metro Park, we were caught by hail. And like, we're running back to the car and just, ha oh, we're going to, and then it starts to hit and it hurts. It's like, oh, <laughs> let's get to the car. This is really <laughs> right. bad. I don't right. want to get brained by hail. You know? Before I forget, if you do go to Ramsayer Farms, yeah. look at and plan to go to the barn restaurant. 
which is right next to it. It's like an Amish run. It's literally an old barn that converted into a, a restaurant. Okay. And it is a great food, good experience, but it's family uh, picnic table style seating. So you're not like, oh, it's me and Colleen. Do you want a booth? Do you want to? No. Okay. Well, we got two seats at this table. You don't know the other eight people at the table. They bring out buckets of food and you pass buckets around. Pass things. So, See, that's actually kind of cool. I yeah. did that one in Boston at a place near near Faneuil Hall where it was all family seating and and you you get you bond. It's really right. kind of fun. You know? So if you go go to Ramsayer Farms, you really okay. should hit the barn. Hit the barn. We do love the Amish buffet. I think I've written about that a number of times. That the comfort food that you find at an Amish buffet, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just up my alley. I so much don't need a hundred dollar meal with like the fanciest wagyu beef steak in the world am i even saying that right you know every time that i say that it's like well people who've had wagyu beef are gonna be oh al you don't know what you're talking about no i don't i would never go to a place where i would order you know but going to a place where it's i don't know 25 or 30 bucks all you can eat i i we've laughed about this i'm sure i, I they have a broccoli salad at their dutchman that i absolutely love and how did i know i was finally finally an adult because I like broccoli salad? That that's what I look forward to the most out of everything they have in this place? Not the pecan pie loaded with sugar and make my eyes vibrate? You know, no, broccoli salad. And I'm sure it's like, starts off as pretty healthy broccoli. And then they put in all kinds of like nuts and crunchies and a little bit of Miracle Whip or whatever. And they destroy it in terms of its nutritional value. Right. No, right. I can convince myself, well, there is broccoli involved. And so it's healthy. Well, you know, that that you know, that that's the old Bill Cosby skit, you know, where he has to feed the kids for breakfast and he goes, he says, chocolate cake, chocolate cake has milk, chocolate cake has eggs. Chunk, here you go, chocolate cake for breakfast. Exactly. Yeah, that doesn't work quite that way, but it's okay. Right. Every time we go downstate, we really do look for Yoder's or Dare Dutchman, or they have various different places that are the Amish buffets, and they they vary in variety of stuff, not just necessarily in quality. They always seem to do like kind of a, a nice job, a prideful job of giving you good food for the money and stuff like that. But it, I, I don't know that that's one of the things that it used to be that we would stop at Waffle House. No, we've thrown over Waffle House for all of our favorite Amish buffets now. So yeah, so okay, I got another one for you. So. Colin used to do all the cryptid stuff. We went to a lot of cryptid shows and he and I have kind of been like, you know, I kind of miss that. And I've got some books. So we're looking at maybe going to some of these again, starting in the new year, going to some conferences, festivals, blah, blah, blah. So one of the big ones every year is down in Point Pleasant is Mothman Festival. It has gotten really huge. I've um, heard of the Mothman, you see, even before it was like featured in X-Files and stuff like that. I read a lot of these books when I was young. Remember when right. we... Very, very first, probably the first that you and I were kind of on each other's radar is because we showed up at the talk that he did yes. at the library, right? Yes. Okay. Yep, so, yep. Yeah. And uh, so the Mothman Festival is very fun. Unfortunately, it's usually the same weekend Marty used to always do his birthday. So it was like, you know what, you know. But anyway, down by the Mothman Festival, we were just driving somewhere once and we saw this barn, not a barn, a building with like a car up on a pole. And <laughs> and it's just like, okay, keep going because Texas Chainsaw Massacre is going to kill us and stuff. And then somebody goes, hey, they got a sign. It says Hillbilly Hot Dogs. What the hell is Hillbilly Hot Dog? Here, right. it's a restaurant. It looks like the most war rundown redneck shack, but it's that's a restaurant funny. that's popular enough that Guy Fieri went on drive-ins, diners, and dives, and he's been there. And it, it's that's like, hilarious. we didn't stop that day. We should have. And it's been on my radar for like four or five years now that we got to go back down. So- I we might go to the Mothman Festival next year, and I'm definitely right. going to Hillbilly Hot Dogs. Hillbilly Hot Dogs. I'll, I'll tell you, like, that's one of those things. You already kind of don't know what goes into a hot dog. <laughs> Hillbilly Hot Dogs has to be, we're not talking beef. We're talking varmint. You know I mean, I mean? You should it's roadkill ground up and put in a casing <laughs> of some unknown origin. <laughs> look look up the Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives episode with Hillbilly Hot Dogs because Very they good. talk about it. And then there's also other ones with on the YouTube channel. It's like they're sitting yeah. there. They're like, oh, hey, Mr. Mayor. So like the mayor of the, the town is just sitting there in a booth eating these <laughs> hot dogs. And, it, you know, these are like 
a, a whole tray of a hot dog. It's just freaking huge. And they're like, okay, well, you want the kitchen sink? There, it's got everything on it. And you know, then, then they got the ones that's like, if you can eat that within so many minutes, it's free. And, right. and it's, it's freaking hot dogs, you know, but they're not the ones you get at the store. These are like big sausage looking hot dogs. Exactly. It's like a murder weapon size hot yes. dog. You know what I mean? So, so that's on my list. I got to get back to that. That's funny. There was an episode of 30 Rock where they found themselves like down in a southern town and they were told that they should go to a place called the Chuckle Hut, if I remember correctly. And it wasn't a <laughs> comedy club. It was they serve pork. And and like, you know, so um, Liz Lemon sits down and goes, yeah, you know, I want the, whatever the special is, extra chuckle. And of course, it turns out that chuckle are like the pig's testes, if I remember correctly. The, the <laughs> Appalachian oysters. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? So they went lamb lamb fries, Rocky Mountain oysters, all those kinds of things. So it, those places do exist. You know what I mean? We, when we've been down to Smoky Mountain National Park, any number of times we went into a restaurant that was like a barbecue place, and it really seemed to be that place has been around for a hundred years. It does things exactly like they did a hundred years ago. Smells great, but like the wood is worn. It's, you know what I mean? The places, uh, it's authentic. For sure it's authentic. I <laughs> hope that it's authentic in terms of no tomain. You know what I right. mean? No, no food poisoning or whatever like that. We've never gotten sick from any of those kinds of places, but those are the ones where I really had to convince myself, I want the authentic experience. I hope I don't regret this come four hours from now when my <laughs> right. stomach is gurgling and roiling, you know? So. Yeah, <laughs> but to be fair, that could happen at other restaurants too, you know? That's right too, exactly. And what like you just said, if you're, if you're there and there's like lots of other people, including the mayor, it has to be an okay place, right? They're not going to kill their own friends. They're not right. going to, you know what it, I mean? It's, it's so funny because we were driving by and it's like, go faster. This looks scary, but it's a restaurant. You know, it's right. all done for atmosphere. And we just happened upon it. It was one of those things. That's what I say. You know, I, I totally get the Cars movie from Disney that, yeah. you know, Radiator Springs, bustling town, everybody loves it. Then the freeway comes in and nobody goes there anymore, but it's got such character in life. You know, yeah. I totally get that because there's so many times I've driven from here all the way up to Toledo and then Detroit, Michigan on no turnpike, no freeway. Just we yeah. purposefully went little back roads and what can we find? What can we see? Uh, you know, and it's a great well, time. I have talked about, we, we, we have been all kinds of places using the interstate system because that's how you get someplace relatively fast. But once we get there, we're always, we're not trying any chain restaurants. We're always trying all the local stuff. And we've talked about how when we had to go to small towns because somebody be happened to have a wedding in one or something right. like that, part of Illinois. And it really is, you know, I like doing this. I like going 35 to 50 instead of 70. I like seeing all the interesting places. We thought of, so please don't steal as everybody who listens to our podcast. We thought of a book series called Driving on the Donut. You know how you get that fake tire that's not even like a inflatable spare? It's that little donut, but it makes you go slow. And we thought we would just put one of those on and be self-limiting in that way and start doing like, let's redo Route 66. Let's take that, that trip up to, you know, all the way up to Mackinac Island, not on the expressways, but just kind of like plot right. that little course that goes county by county. You get to see all the county seats you get to see all the cool little restaurants all the little air not airbnb bnbs and stuff like that i i think that we now that we have all the time we want with no like fit as much vacation as you can into a two three week period i think we're going to start doing more of those little exploratory nice. trips nice. where you kind of have an overall destination but you can tootle along and see what you find. You know what I mean? Like, go to that. Hey, this farm has a petting zoo. Let's go meet the chickens. Yeah. Way. But here it is in the middle of, anyway. anyway. Right. So here, it looks like, there, I don't remember the title of these books, but I remember it was a book back in the 70s or 80s that was real popular that was essentially a recipe book of how to cook and live off your car engine heat. So you would use the heat from the car engine to cook your food while traveling. I, uh, I've seen that book. I think there's even a series, more than yes, one. Yes. Like, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. So look that up because that'd be a, a cool thing to actually do. I always wanted to try it, but you know, never did. I know a, a Cleveland phenomenon. There's books called One Tank Trips. Neil, Neil Zerker, uh, Zurich. Zerker, Zerker, Zerker exactly. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I, that's like, this should be in, like, I, we're now in town 20 years. I am. 
and and so like when we went to the mckinley memorial it was like wow how why did it take me 20 years to get to a presidential place that's kind of bad proportion or something like that bad priorities so having said that i should just like go to zerker's book and say so what drew him to go each of these little radiuses outward from cleveland and and just that it's interesting food interesting history you know beautiful nature that kind of stuff and just start doing those you know what i mean i've I've got two of those books (laughs) okay and we're discovering that you know it doesn't have to be on the weekends when it's more crowded and more screaming kids and stuff like that i think we talked about this we we intend to do a lot of tuesday to thursday travel where everybody else is still you know either working or kids are in school or whatever else it might be so we went down to gahanna and kind of had the place to ourselves you know what i mean it's nice to go to these things where i can see when the festival's going on this must be just elbow to elbow crowds in the streets you go to myland during melon fest and it's it's a mob scene you go there elsewise and you really get to wander the antique stores and stuff like that and yeah. all that's cool. nice so, yeah. all right, all right okay. well hey, it's been an hour ish and i know you got things to go do i have vaccinations to get exactly you know i'm we now that they finally got the latest covid out for iris and what the other ones are found a place that has them and in fact cvs go to hell twice i had appointments you didn't get him in in time so you had to cancel me so walgreens came through for me so that's where i'm going for 11 o'clock today so hats off to them for <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, correctly <laughs> I, I saw desantis and the florida ag are refusing to let the uh vaccines into florida because they refuse to let floridians be guinea pigs and tested on and it, it's just like honestly Stephen. So when are those guys going to go up on crimes? Isn't that the equivalent of like manslaughter? Because that this could save lives and prevent it from happening. It's like a war crime. The problem is the people that would bring them up on crimes are their friends. The ones they, the golf buddies, they're the ones that like, Hey, I'll support you on this. You support me on that. So it's just never going to happen until enough people die that they can't turn away from it until enough people die that it's not a matter of um, attacking the government they'll personally sue DeSantis not with the mantle of governor that protects him but like you did this you said this you caused this to happen it applies to all kinds of other war criminals when they're finally brought up in Czechoslovakia and other places it should have applied to Trump long ago you know what I mean all of what we've had millions plus deaths it, it wouldn't have been him talking about how this isn't real or eat bleach or whatever insanity he proposed <laughs> ultraviolet lights like how in the world has the national inquirer become the medical source for the white house and like and the fact that fauci was defamed for being like this guy is brilliant and has been such a great citizen has saved so many lives and yet somehow because he it is unbelievable what we've let our company a uh, country absolutely come with the, the stupid getting their way the, somebody has to push past and say <laughs> no how about if we really try to save the most lives not uh, Here, here's almost, here's here's really- the barometer the indicator of how stupid the santis and irrational it went, because when was the last time you heard one of those florida man news articles those are all getting pushed aside because they don't seem as crazy as the politicians in florida do now <laughs> absolutely boy that, that's about you know 10 years gone now when you start to have it that the onion and the babylon b they can't be sarcastic and unrealistic enough compared to some of the real stories right. no wonder you can't differentiate between that kind of stuff and reality nowadays because people really do say the most stupid things do the most vile things you can't make fun of them because they're already doing it oh it's man. a it's a, a it's, story about it. it's a sorry state of affairs when mad magazine oh, becomes non-fiction <laughs> exactly so what I always admire are the people that it isn't just the this terrible thing happened, let's really not let this happen again, but that they find a way to make it very pointedly humorous, if you will. So you might have read that over the weekend, crazy, you know, Colorado congressperson Bobert oh, was geez. ridiculous in a showing of, let's see, not the Lion King. Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, thank you. And like of course, when she was told, be quiet, everybody else is enjoying the movie, and asked to leave, of course, she says ridiculous things like egotistic, vile assholes do. Don't you know who I am? Now that that has happened and people know, 
that shenanigans are sure to ensue. So there's all kinds of people that are filming them all the time. We are in this world of there are reporters, investigative reporters all around because they all have cell phones. It came out that she was with her date and she was actually like taking out his item in the theater. Like, I'm pretty sure that's illegal as all hell. Public, uh, what is it? Not obscenity, public indecency, right? And then the, the funny part that someone came up with is, Yes, this woman who just did that, apparently she's been asked to speak at like a Texas youth conference, because what better example could you have than <laughs> some whore taking out her boyfriend? She feels entitled in a movie theater. Yeah, she feels entitled that off. she could do anything she wants because she's of that Trump and Marjorie Taylor Green. I'll yell and scream and draw attention to myself and I'm famous. Now I can do what I want. And now I can do what I want. The one that cracked That's me up, and I have not verified this. I don't know where the said that, you know, most of these Republicans are from that are pro-child. We, you know, we don't want abortions. We're pro-child. We want to protect our kids. We're protecting our kids. Right. We also live in states that still have laws that you can marry a 14-year-old even that, that the hypocrisy the inconsistency the idiocy that goes with people that can really try to hold those two thoughts in their mind and be okay with it instead of let's at least be consistent about do we love our children or don't we do we protect our children or don't we it, it's it's disgusting and crazy and, and, and arguably oh. why is banning books protecting our children <laughs> that's taking my rights away as a parent and, I'm sorry that we're getting to this late because this could be an entire. Yeah, it really could. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I've I've never met a censor that wasn't the worst person that should be in that job. Exactly. They, exactly the wrong sense of what's important, what's tasteful, what's what's like the idea that their taste should be everybody's taste is just ridiculously un-American and ridiculously illogical. And yet it doesn't stop them. It doesn't say, as long as I take care of my kids and make sure that I'm watching what they're reading, I'll raise my kids right and they'll serve as a good example. No, they are so incensed by, you name it, a naughty word or a naughty topic, a naughty topic to them, like, you know, Billy has two mommies. Like, it, it's just ridiculous, that kind of stuff. And it being done instead of, how about if we work on infant mortality? How about if we work on making sure all child children get their vaccines so that they don't die of fucking polio? How right. about if we do that instead of look out a bad word? If we're going to get rid of books about slavery and different sexualities and you know violence and things, we need to get rid of the Bible. Well, that, that comes up every single time. If you're looking yes. for the largest number of terrible violent acts terrible incest you know like and like talking snakes talking you know what i mean like satanic weirdness burning it, talking bushes <laughs> like that and and yet that one gets a pass because it's the one because that's the one they choose exactly that and so it eventually not eventually right now those things are being fought you know it, it isn't only down in texas i i just down in um near mason ohio they were trying to defund their library because they had books they didn't want in it. So out of 130,000 books in the library, they don't like these 30, close the library down. Anybody who does that kind of proposal should be immediately, your sense of proportion is so out of whack that we don't need to hear another word. I don't need to hear the list of titles. I don't need to hear why you think they're so objectionable. You don't know what a library is about. You don't know what civilization is about, that it's about this shared resource being available to everyone and everybody managing their own reading lists, everybody's parents managing their own children's reading lists. It's not at all. It can't be about you and your incredible narrow closed mind. And yet they just took up an entire board of education meeting, a, a school, you know, school board and whatever those things are where they discuss the budget. Nothing else got discussed. How are we going to keep our roads running? How are we going to make sure that there's emergency sirens installed? Nope. All about these naughty books that I don't want in the library. It, that that craziness that lets them obsess and pull everybody into their obsession, it has to be stopped. Some, whoever's running the meeting, has to just tap, tap the gavel and say, I think we've heard enough. On we go to the next issue. We are not doing what you're going to say. Right. You can't yell loud enough. You can't be, what, fundamentalist holy enough. The things that you claim in the name of a, a, a wonderful thing, like the peace of God, Jesus Christ, and, and how he tried to help us be better people you've missed the point all those books you didn't read so you could get your reading comprehension scores up now we're seeing the result 
You suck as a reader. You don't get to tell anybody else what or how to read. You suck. Well, well, <laughs> I want to hear that in a city council meeting. Excuse me, ma'am, but you suck. Anyway, well, I just saw that the Catholic Church in Ohio is putting like a million dollars towards making sure what is it, issue one passes so that people don't have abortion rights. And the Catholic Church is backing that. It's like, where's that separation we're supposed to have? This is so political. Like that. Like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Ohio's not going to do it. I'm pretty sure that there are enough rational, civilized people that whatever the thing is that there's probably going to be two competing things on the ballot for guaranteeing uh, the right to an abortion or trying to shut down abortion entirely. And I really think that we are not going to go the stupid way because it's not going to be a matter of like any referendum is not a matter of the gerrymandering and the bullshit that we've done in our various different congressional districts to allow there to be over-representation of the red Republican conservative intolerant, foolish, coward, asshole viewpoint that we're going to have all the people say, we're not taking a step 100 years back. We're not going back to the dark ages. We're not going to make, we're not going to have children be forced to have babies because they can't have one and they can't leave. And they're met, they they just had a terrible story about with no exceptions, you're really going to do and there are no exceptions things for rape or incest. And there really are those babies being forced to be born it boggles my mind. Like what, what's the biggest, the Bible is not morality. Our code of laws is about morality. And when you say the innocent, innocent must not be published, punished along with the guilty, that's just absolutely necessary. There aren't acceptable losses. You have to make a, find a way to differentiate between the two. Right. And yet people are willing to say whatever they need to, to get their way. And that's its own kind of insanity. And disgusting insanity we can't be pulled into that weird crazy world agreed absolutely so, so there I, it, you know and it's like because it's relentless geekery isn't that always the geek point of view what are the facts what's the logic that leads you to conclusion from those facts and the minute you see that that's not the case like stop talking about what you believe with all your heart because it's still wrong it doesn't matter how important this is to you it doesn't matter how crazy obsessively right. It, it's still wrong it doesn't follow from what we know of reality you don't get to substitute your fractured reality for the real world and yet we'll see right There's people are determined they will not stop obsessing we'll see that hopefully all of us it's, a, it's going to be a better world if we take these books out of the library right and I'm able to be in power to get kickback money to pass the laws that the local big business wants. That makes it a better world. Right. Seeing that, that combination of the corruption that also then professes to be better than you and I because they're religious. When are we going to get past that smoke screen? <laughs> right. finally, you know what I mean? Oh, oh. Okay. Well, I, I've said <laughs> last week about this new generation uh, and you know how they're looking at the world differently. They're, they're a lot less religious in general than every past generation. There's a, the, every church is having difficulties pretty much with membership right now. So, right. Which is why they're digging in their heels more than ever to try to make sure that it, something gets cast in stone instead of being, nope, you're no longer in fashion. You're no longer, people aren't buying into your silliness in the way that there used to be no other alternatives. Now, everybody can see there's plenty of alternatives about how to be a perfectly decent, moral, ethical person without having the threat of hell be what does that right the, oh oh well yep, yep. all right <laughs> okay. you gotta get going so, so. i gotta go i gotta get yep. my take care Steve. talk to you later all right take ah. care okay